everyone! I'm here today to show you my super worm collection. These guys are awesome. They eat all of the little scraps that Rishi won't eat. And yes, Rishi is very picky. He will only eat select foods. And sometimes he has some scraps. So I put them in here and I feed my little worms. Now the reason why I have worms is because I had a spider. And um, that's because I have arachnophobia. Also, here's here's some um, holes so that they can breathe. They're tiny little holes that I drilled in. You want to make sure you do this. Today we're going to be um, sifting them, changing them, putting new substrate in, and putting them in a smaller container because I gave a lot of them to my friend for their lizard. And um, I don't have a lizard anymore, and I don't have a spider anymore. Also, you're going to want to have this sifter it has bigger holes in it and then later i'll show you one that has like smaller ones you have quaker oats the old-fashioned kind you can get that for pretty cheap at walmart and of course their new little habitat their new little enclosure which you can pick this up at walmart or any other store like home depot they have little storage containers like this and they're awesome and they're easy to clean this one i found in our storage unit so I'm using this. You can also add holes in there so that they can breathe, of course. But yeah, we're going to be using that today. So uh, back to my story about the spider. So I have arachnophobia. And um, last year I thought, I don't want this fear anymore. So I'm actually going to try my best to get rid of that fear. And the only way to get rid of that fear is to... Dose yourself with spooter videos and memes and cute pictures of them. And so I started off slow, worked my way. I had like 20 pictures of random cute things like kitties and puppies and lizards and all kinds of cute little things. And then I would put in every so often a picture of a cute, like a spider that's like furry. Like, you know, like a little meme that has like a little kawaii spider or something like that. And um, soon enough, I was like, I got used to those pictures, and I was like, this is pretty cute. Then I moved on to watching some videos online of people who have spiders. My favorite channel is The Dark Den, and that is the channel that really solidified me in not being so afraid of spiders. So that's what I did. And here you see my enclosure it looks disgusting there's fecal matter all over the place you know i forgot what it's called but uh yeah this is our enclosure it kind of stinks because i haven't cleaned them in a while so that's why we're doing it today so first things first i'll get back to my story in a little bit but first things first i want to make sure i have everything here i have a little tin where i'm going to be you know, a little cookie thing that I use that I'm going to be sifting them through. And I'm going to take out everything, including their carrots. This is the carrots that uh, Rishi didn't want to eat. And there's some worms stuck in there. So I'm just going to put them in there for now. Just so that they're out of the way and they're safe. <clears throat> oh, I'll just put you in here. That's okay. I'll we'll just move you over here. You're safer over here. That's right. I'm going to be using you as... Yeah. So that's what the, these are. These little guys. They, they look like this. They're, they're tiny. He's alive. There's even tinier ones in there too. Like little babies. Which I'll show you how to sift those suckers out too. Because those things, they can fit into any little crack. There. So now... I'm going to take out all the other stuff. They have uh, this chola thing, which is like a dried cactus. This you can use for lizards too, but I'm just kind of like checking to see if there's any in there. Right now I don't see any, so I'm just going to put that away. I'll check it later for, you know, detail check. Then this is some like bark that you can get like for your arachnids and stuff. They really like this, especially when the little worms turn into beetles. They like to go on top of the, on top of that. 
is we'll remove that out too and their little tiny skull because I love skulls. You have to have a skull. Another piece of bark, just checking to make sure there's nothing in there, tapping on it, you know. Just trying to shake any little tiny babies off there. Oh, looks good. Alright. Ugh. Nasty. Oh, there's so many. There's so many in there. Ugh. All that little, like, light brown, like, dirt. That's not dirt. That's poop. That's, that's little wormy poop. And they're like, oh, castings, that's what they're called. Little castings, tiny little castings. This is so good for your garden, I'm going to keep that. That's my end goal, is I'm going to move all of them into a clean environment, and I'm going to save their poops for my garden. Everything likes these things. It's so nutritious. And honestly, it's only nutritious because you put good, you feed them good things. So, what you feed them is what you're getting out of them. Nutrients-wise. Also, you really don't need to put any water in here, and actually I discourage you to put any water in their enclosure because, um, like, like a little cap or anything, because they'll go in there and they'll drown. And it also um, will make sure that it bacteria gets in there and then mold will start growing. And you don't want mold. So they actually get all of their moisture from, like, the carrots and the leafy greens that you give them. Uh, so a lot of times I'll give them tiny little pieces of like lettuce that or like sorry kale that Rishi didn't eat that's like old that he's not going to eat at all you won't even touch it and I'll put it in there and they will have it gone it'll be gone within 10 minutes they attack that thing they love kale they love carrots you know anything that's a vegetable or like a fruit even I kind of stay away from fruit because it's so um juicy but carrots seem to be like the best and they really like the carrots so here I'm just going to sift it out. I'm using this. I'm sifting out the smaller things from the bigger pieces. I had wood shavings in here. Wood shavings are okay, but I honestly rather put the oats in there because it's another food source for them. And also it's easier to sift out. But you got to do what you got to do, right? So I'm just going to sift this. Probably going to time lapse this later. <laughs> See, I'm tapping it. You want to tap gently. You know, you don't want to give them a whirly ride, so. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> Alright, and that's going to go in that little bin. So now we have two bins going. And I just do one scoop at a time. Sometimes I'll, I can, it, sometimes I'll do about like two to three scoops. But it seems to be working so far. Alright, so back to my story about me having arachnophobia. This is the third time we're going back to this, but, you know, random. Me just being random. <laughs> so, I love Dark Den Channel. I love watching him. He doesn't just have spiders. He has lizards. And he has had a hamster. I don't know if he has a hamster anymore. But, and he has like snails and beetles. And of course you have to feed all of them. So they have little beetles and little wormies too. And I love that channel. That channel really helped me get rid of my fear. So if you want to get rid of your arachnophobia, start off slow. It's not a rush. A phobia is a phobia. It's a fear. And you want to get rid of that fear, but you want to do it slowly, of course. So, that's what I did. So, I got to the point where I was actually watching all of Dark Den's videos of him feeding his tarantulas. And I got to the point where I was like, I kind of want a spider, you know? They're so cute. Like a tiny one, not a tarantula. Because Tim would never go for a tarantula. Oh my goodness, he's, he's scared of spiders too. So, um, I decided... That I was going to go outside of my balcony and see if I could find a spider. You know? And I did. I actually didn't even find one on my balcony. I went to my grandparents' place and visited. And they have a four-season porch. 
and they actually had a little jumping spider and he was gonna kill it and I was like no kill it grandpa don't kill it I'm gonna take it home so I had a little jumping spider and I named it Houdini <laughs> because when I put it in its little enclosure it just hid all the time and it was adorable and so for Houdini I would feed them uh, little blue bottle flies tiny little flies and you normally would get those as like tiny little larva cocoons and where do you get those you can get them at pet stores you can get them at animart you can get them at PetSmart, petco but um usually your best 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 place to get them would be like an online source um for me i used josh's frogs and i got little blue bottle flies for it i think at one point and this is how, this is a long story, but this is how I got the worms. One time, I was going to order, I was going to restock my order of blue bottle flies. And I only had like a few flies left. And I was like, this isn't going to do, I have to, you know, I have to get them. But they actually were legitimately out of stock. And this doesn't happen very often. But it happened this time, and I didn't know what else to feed Houdini at all, because that's all that he's ever eaten was that. So I was like, I can't, I can't do, like, the wax worms. Like, they, they, they didn't have, I, at first I didn't even know wax worms were a thing. Wax worms would be better if you're going to feed a little jumping spider, because they're softer. But I only knew about super worms. So I quick ran to like my aunt, my local Animart store, which is the closest store for me, and I got the little super worms. And it comes in a tiny little container, and it was all great. And that's what I used. And so Houdini lived off of those for quite a while. And of course, you know, when you have a bunch of worms, uh, they they like to they like to get all jiggy with it, you know, and they reproduce. And they make little more little wormies and they turn into beetles. And once they turn into beetles, you can't feed your, your spider them because they have that hard shell. So that's what I did. I fed Houdini the super worms, the tinier ones. And then I let the other ones grow up to beetles and then the life cycle went over again. And soon enough, um, Houdini passed away and I was left with all sorts of little beetles and worms. And I can't, I, what do you do with those things? What do you do with them? I don't know what you do with them. I don't want to kill them. You know, I'm not like that. I can't, I cannot find it in my heart to kill them. So I decided that I was going to keep them as pets. <laughs> and I was going to learn everything about them, honestly. I like hyper focused on it. Um, so, ew, look at all this. So, this, this is the castings. And it's kind of stuck to the rims and in the crevices but we want to save that i'm not afraid to touch little poops i'm not afraid to touch it you know it's good it's really good nutritious stuff for my plants so it's definitely worth it so i'm just going to sift this all in i think i'm at that stage i just gotta put it all in there There we go. Oop. Oh. Oop. Oh. One of them is stuck. I can't get him off. He's not coming off. There's one that's stuck in there. Come on, little wormy. You don't want to stay in that bin. This bin is going to be retired. It's not going to have any wormies in it anymore. Oh, no. Come on. Oop. Oh. Can I pick him up? I can't pick him up. I don't have nails. That's right. I chew my nails. Which is why I keep my nails polished. Because I'll chew them. I have a nervous habit of doing that. Oh my gosh, this worm is resilient. Wow. Okay, well, he's out. So, and there's none, none little babies in there. So we're good. Now we can move on. So now we have the big shavings and the smaller shavings. The smaller things. Now the big shavings have like the bigger worms in. But there are still babies that got through this other sifter. Here, let me turn this. 
There you go. You can probably see it better now. Let me just tap this one. Get this over with. All right. I think that's good enough. No, let me just make sure. Make sure that everything. I saw a little bit more of the castings in there, so it's not quite all out. There you go. All right. Oop. A little wormy stuck there. We don't want that. Okay, let's check. Make sure no wormies stuck in there. Wormies, no wormies, no wormies. No wormies. Perfect. No wormies. Yay. All right. So I don't know if you can see this. This is kind of going to... I don't know if it's going to be blurry or not. I'm going to try and show you. But it's moving. Look at it. Those are all worms. They're all worms. Oh, I love this. This is the best. I love it. And then I put my hands in there, of course, because it feels so cool. <laughs> I just love these little guys. They eat all of my stuff and turn turn the stuff into like their little feces which is like composting i love that <laughs> you know i just i want to show you i want to show you one really bad like up close i don't know if it's gonna actually be okay to like show because it might be blurry this this camera doesn't want to focus today Here he is, my little wormy friend. These guys don't bite. They don't bite you. And they feel so cool. They have a hard little shell. They turn into little cocoonies. And then the little cocoony grubby things turn into um, the, the beetles. Too bad you can't see Rishi. Also, this is this is the castings. Now, the little white flakes are basically their little exoskeletons that they shed off in order to grow. They do have that. So, we're going to sift this even more because I'm pretty sure there's little babies in there. I'm pretty sure there's tiny little ones that got through the other sifter. So, uh, let me, you know what? Are there little ones in there? Oh, yep. There's little ones in there. Well, tiny little things. You won't be able to see it on camera. But, trust me, the tiny ones in there. Doop, 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 doop. Okay. Alright, let me go get another sifter. I have a smaller one. And it's like for coffee. It's like a little coffee sh sifter. That's what I'm gonna go get. I have to find it first, of course. tinier it's like super meshy super meshy these little things they're not gonna get through this there's like tiny little pin holes in it that's what you want that's what's going to separate the exoskeletons and the little tiny babies and the uh castings sorry i keep forgetting that word castings Yeah, this is definitely a process. I'm just going to use the lid to sift that. I mean, that's good enough, I think. So I'm going to do what I did before. Take a tablespoon of stuff. I think I'll just keep to a tablespoon, actually. And then I will do this sifting again. And as you can see, all of the castings are being separated. And all of the exoskeleton slash little babies will be saved in the sifter and that will go in a different bowl which i just realized i don't have shoot i was not prepared not prepared in the least uh oh yep i gotta go get one that's okay I just go get a bowl. A plastic bowl will do. One that we don't really use. 
after I'm all done, I'm definitely going to wash everything, of course. You know, put it in the dishwasher a few times. But I think that'll be good enough. We don't have a whole lot. And then I'm just going to dump it in there. Boop, boop. Couple taps. And this is what I'm going to do. Basically the same thing. So yeah, this is definitely something that is really fun for kids. If you are a parent that does not mind that your kid get a little dirty. However, I would definitely encourage you to wear a mask. Because the castings and the little exoskeletons, um, you can breathe that in and nobody wants to cough that up. So... I'm just kind of used to it by now, so I didn't wear a mask, but you should probably wear a mask, especially if you have little kids and you want them to be in on this little process, which this is a pretty cool learning experience. I mean, when I was a kid, I would have loved to get down and dirty with this. However, you know, maybe an age discretion is advised type of deal because, you know, some kids will definitely like throw it all over and then you'll have beetles all over your house in a few months <laughs> you don't want that either but yep yeah, this is basically playing in dirt i'm gonna sprinkle all of this lovely nutritious stuff into all of my plants and they're going to love me for the winter at least for the winter <laughs> and this is actually like a few months of not cleaning them you can clean them regularly if you don't want to use the castings. I think it's getting to the point where I can put all of it in there. Maybe. This actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. Which is nice. Sometimes it takes a long time. When I had a lot of worms, it took me a few hours. Almost done with this, just giving him a few little love taps. You know, tiny little love taps. Make sure I got it all out there. It's kind of getting difficult. There you go. It's time to put a lot in there. Two scoops. Two scoops. Let's do this. Da, 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 da. Like I said, I'm probably going to time lapse this. Maybe. If there's enough. The last little bit has gone in. I'm just gonna set this little bit out. And then I'll show you what I mean by separating everything. I don't think, I still don't think you're gonna see the little babies. But, you might. Also, I'd like to take this time to, like, actually tell you that um, when I was first sifting I did see like tiny little white um lice I, I guess they're called little wood lice tiny little things you can barely notice them those are okay to have in there they're those are fine they're not gonna hurt your little worms or anything however if you have red ones that's not good because the red ones will eat them they will eat the little babies and then you won't get to see them grow up and you'll just have a whole bunch of little red things. And those red things hurt. They bite the little red lice. Wood lice. Alright. Let's pick off the little things. Check it. Make sure there's no little tiny ones in there. Stuck in there. And it's good. Alright. So this is what I'm talking about. Look at this. Oh, will it focus? Focus. 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 
maybe not maybe it won't focus it's it's just all castings this is just all what your veggies turn into and I'm going to use this it's fine powdered little poops and I'm gonna put it back in there and I'm gonna save it in this container Yep, all that work for that. Heck yeah. Your vegetables will be praising you over the winter, that's for sure. I also use this for mushrooming. Which we'll get into at a later date. <laughs> I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> so that I'll go put that away. And here's what the bigger flakes are. These are like the little exoskeletons, but I'm fairly positive that there's tiny little babies in there moving around somewhere. And so I'm going to later on stick this on top over by the vegetables so that they can be the first ones to get the food and nutrients so they can grow. The bigger ones, they have all kinds of little le big legs and they're a lot bigger so they can find the food better. But I want the little tiny ones to be able to find the food. So that's what my plan is. This, I'm going to incorporate these with the oats. Just because I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to like hand pick all of my little worms out. That would take way too long. And we don't have a whole lot of time and this has been dragged out. Alright folks, here we are. I'm gonna re-record this thing. Alright, so uh you wanna fill about that much, about half an inch, about half an inch of the enclosure with the oats, and then the rest is gonna be what the little wormies were in. So there they are, that's how I put everything in. Here you go, and that's it. Anywho. Um, I did put some carrots in there, but they're completely gone, and it's only been a few days. So, uh, here we are. I'm going to put that aside and get a cutting board. And I chose a big plump carrot. I'm only going to use half of this carrot, because the worms don't need the whole thing. So, I'll give the bigger piece to Rishi. But, yeah, we'll half that. And, um, I'll cut the little piece off. Rishi doesn't like those pieces and that can go with the worms too. They'll eat this right up. Alright. Now I think I'm going to cut this in half again and then sideways. I think that's our best bet. Alright. Here's one piece. Uh, we'll half this one again too. We'll do it on the flat side. Be careful when you're cutting these things because they are round. You can cut yourself pretty easily. Alright, I'll cut that piece. I don't know why I'm cutting them. See? They can roll away. They're little roly polies. Okay, we'll save that for Rishi too if you like that. Alright, let me see if I can make space here. Put you up here. Alright. Oh, it's gonna be in the way. No, I, I gotta move it sideways. I kinda wanted you guys to see the carrots in the shot. But, yeah, that'll do. Okay, now we have our worms. All the worms are accounted for in here. We're just going to feed them. We're going to put the carrots in the front part so that it's easier for me to just open a little bit of the enclosure and then see if they're, the carrots are eaten or whatnot and then put more food in there instead of having to pull the whole thing out, disturbing them um, during the day. They, they don't really like bright lights. So they'll, if they, if there's like a lot of bright light detected, they'll go and hide underneath the substrate. So we'll put the pieces in now. One, two, 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 two. Oh yeah, and I like to put them on the side that I cut them with because there's more moisture there and it's less hard for them to get in there. Although it really doesn't matter, I just do that. It's just my preference. And then we're going to put this one in there. And another one. The, these will be gone. This, this this amount of carrots for me, uh, for, the, for the little worms, basically lasts about maybe like 
four days. So th all th this carrot is going to be completely gone. Well, all gone in four days. But it works out really good because if I have any vegetable scraps, I can put them in there and they'll eat them. And like with kale and stuff, they'll suck out all the moisture like little vampires. And then um, they'll leave the really dried kale. So, yeah. And then the beetles will eat the dry kale sometimes. Not all the time. A lot of times I just take the dry kale out. And then I replace it with, with food that has like moisture in it. Like the carrots. So, yep. We'll go feed those to Rishi. He's just waiting for his carrots. He can smell them. He wants them. Look at them later. So yeah, so after you're all done making it look pretty and feeding your little wormies. Um, what am I doing here? I guess I'm trying to get a really good angle so that you guys can see me put in the enclosure. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, alright. So we're just going to put them in there. And that's it. After you're all done making it look pretty and have the food in there, you slide it all in there and you're all good to go. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a great day and a great week. Thank you for watching, everyone. Bye!